What's up everybody, this is Scratch and we're gonna do a video. We are gonna take a look at the new dashboard update. It just came out today. Today is January 23rd and this is it. I'm sure you've probably seen it. Um, you've seen Mikey Barra talk about it. You've seen Major Nelson talk about it. it was on the podcast. They have videos about it. So you've probably already seen all of this, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go through and we're just gonna kind of walk through it. I'm gonna talk about it a little bit myself, uh, give you some of my opinions, and I would love to hear your comments, thoughts, and opinions uh, down in the comments. We can talk about it. I'll make another video. We can do you know, that sort of interaction or whatever and just kind of see what you think. I'll have links to everything down in the description for uh, anything I talk about that you might be interested in. So check the description for links and stuff. But let's just take a look. The obvious difference right off the bat is the complete redesign of the sizes of the tiles. Now you can see that we still have all of our previous stuff and my pins are all still down here even though I need to update them. And then you can see that I'm playing Rise and Shine. Now because I have my background set to a solid color, you can see right across the top that it is using the um, game art as the hero there at the top and that'll change when we jump over to Watch Dogs 2 here in just a second. Um, but the other thing I want to talk about is just how quickly you can get to the guide. Um, just with one prut and press, just like that, it pops right up and you actually start off, which I think is a smart thing, you actually start off in the middle. So it's just as many button presses down to, um, you know, say the settings or whatever as it is to go up to the achievements or to your profile. So Speaking of achievements, we will jump right into that. So I'm going to launch uh, Rise and Shine here. And so now that I'm in a game, we can go up to the achievements. And you'll see that I have all of my achievements listed here. One other thing that we should look at first, though, is I can switch to Gamer Score Leaderboard. So we can see that January has eight days left. And uh, these are all my friends who have really high Gamer Score. And I'm down as measly like 78. That's kind of that's embarrassing, but it's been a it's been a bad month for gamer score. But I'll work on that. Um, and if I go here to December, I can click that, and I can load up December's um, list as well. You can see some of the same names up there. Twenty thousand, Mike. Thirty thousand for Stallion. That's that's amazing. I don't think I've ever had a month that big. Uh, I need to I need to soon though. Uh, but anyways, if we go here to switch to switch to achievements, you can see that I have a couple different options. I have uh, see my achievements, which will just take me to my achievement list, which which looks the same. I have the achievement tracker. So let's turn the achievement tracker on. Um, so now that that is on, I can go to configure tracker. And what that'll do is I can say where I want to put the tracker. So I can pick anywhere I want to put it. I'm going to put it in the upper left-hand corner just because. Um, and when we go back to the game, you'll see that I have... Uh, thanks for playing the Secret Whisper and Bossing the Boss. Those are the next three in order. However, if I go here and I go up to the achievements and I favorite some of them... Uh, let's go to Indestructible, and I will press X to make that a favorite. And I will go to the Survivor and MVP and make those favorites. So now you can see the achievements that I'm tracking on the screen actually change. And then I can just turn that off. So this way you don't have to um, you know, kind of keep swapping back and forth. Actually, uh, Watch Dogs would have, been, would have been a better example, but I'm going to look at that in just a second. Um, so then I can go and I can turn the Achievement Tracker off. I can go in here and I can press uh, whatever I want um, to turn them off if I don't want to favorite them. So if I come up here and let's say I just like totally obliterate this thing and I make a cool jump and I want to capture that really quick I just press the home button and immediately it stops and I have Y save a screenshot X to record that or I can hit the back button what I call the back button the Windows button whatever um, I can actually start recording with the game DVR I can record the last 15 seconds uh, 30 seconds 45 minute or three minutes uh, all the way back up to five minutes so that's pretty cool um, I do like the idea of just being able to start recording really quickly like if if you wanted to record a lot of gameplay or whatever, it kind of gives you like these fast access to it uh, right here at the top. So uh, record that or whatever. We'll just do the default of like 30 seconds or whatever. But being able to hit the back button and then and then select what you want is also really favorable. So let's just jump over now uh, to Watch Dogs 2. 
Okay, so one of the achievements in this game we are tracking is called Hold My Hair. We are in Watch Dogs 2, and that is to take a picture of somebody puking. And so I want to see what happens when we grab an achievement uh, that we're tracking. Here we go. Here we go. Did I get it? He was puking, I think. Oh, come on. Yes, I got it. Okay, so uh, now you can see that <clears throat> take a picture of somebody vomiting. So now you can see the achievement pops and then it goes away from the tracked achievements that I have. So you can only track three achievements at the moment, but um, as you unlock them, they will disappear. So that's pretty cool. Um, so now we're going to jump over to the settings and I want to show you the final thing, which I think is really amazing. So let's just head over there. <clears throat> okay, so down here under the ease of access, I think uh, one of the coolest things that they have implemented now because I actually... Um, you can actually see like what this is going to do for somebody. Um, for example, uh, first thing I want to show you, I haven't seen this before. It may have already been there, uh, but they have auto for uh, audio for mono output. So you can uh, put mono output. So if somebody was, for example, say deaf in one ear or had some other disability, um, this could actually help them out. So I think that's really cool. And then the other thing is underneath the controller settings, we have two things. Uh, we have vibration settings to turn controller vibration on and off. Um, which was previously only on the Elite controller, which I do happen to have right here. Um, and then also here we now have Copilot settings. So if I click on here on Copilot settings, um, I can come down here and I can say turn on Copilot. And it's going to ask me to connect my uh, controller. So I'm going to connect a controller right here. It looks a little, it's different colors, you can't tell, but it's, it's one of the Design Lab ones. So I'm going to connect that one. And um, so it's connected. So now I'm going to turn on Copilot. It just vibrated. So I press A on this. And what this does is it allows two controllers to be used as one. So for example, if I'm here with this controller and I press up and down, um, you can see that it moves right there. And then if I get my other Elite controller and I do the same thing, if I'm not hitting the buttons, um, but anyways, I can do... Uh, up and down on this controller as well. So basically both controllers are connected at the same time. So um, you can do like a co-pilot thing or it could be a situation where somebody, you know, has to play with their feet or or like with their chin or something like that. And then it and allows them to have more than one controller uh, to make these movements, which could open up the use of the Xbox to a lot more people, which I think is amazing. Um, that's That's actually a really a really really cool um, addition that they have in this update so you can check that under un, check that out under ease of access if you have any questions comments or whatever I'd love to hear them I'd love to know what you think about this uh, let me know if you guys have any questions uh, the beam uh, beam streaming and arena and all of that stuff is coming a little bit later so I'll be sure and show you about that um, you know when when it's when it becomes available I did in fact stream on beam the other day using the new FTL protocol I was sub one second uh, with 1080p 60 frames per second and it was amazing i actually have i mean i have more lag in my old video camera to my computer that it's directly connected to than i do streaming to beam with this camera here um it's it's pretty insane so but like i said leave a comment questions or anything down below let's talk about this i want to know what you think thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time